Hello there, I'm Lloyd Evans and you're watching the John Cedars channel from The Bunker. And in this video, I want to talk more about the child sex abuse database that Watchtower keeps. I mentioned this in a recent video in which I went through 10 things that Jehovah's Witnesses don't know about their own religion. And I spent a bit of time explaining how it is that we know that Jehovah's Witnesses keep secret records about pedophiles. Now, when I say Jehovah's Witnesses, I don't mean your ordinary Jehovah's Witness who goes to the Kingdom Hall. I try to distinguish as much as possible between ordinary worshippers who wouldn't dream, I would assume, most of them, wouldn't dream of keeping records on pedophiles that aren't handed over to authorities so that these people can be prosecuted. No, we're talking about the organisation that most of these people, in fact all of these people, look up to, which I refer to in my videos as Watchtower. Now again, in this 10 things that Jehovah's Witnesses don't know video, I went into a number of lines of evidence that this database exists, such as the um, the 1006 pedophiles that were uncovered by the Australian Royal Commission, such as the facts that Watchtower sent bets and powies in the wake of the Panorama um, documentary, all of that sort of thing. I'm not going to go into it all again. Check out the video if you haven't done so already. And there you will see five, I think, lines of evidence that this database exists. Now, since making that video, I've had reason to do more research on this and that's because, as some of you may know, I am a core participant for the forthcoming ICSA inquiry, the inquiry into child sexual abuse in the UK, which is kind of the UK's equivalent of the Australian Royal Commission. And it's my job as a core participant to help the inquiry understand more of what the issues are. Now I'm fairly limited in what I can talk about in that capacity, but I can tell you that in the course of my own research, uh, I've again been drilling down into this database issue because I want to show how blatant it all is and how urgently this issue needs to be addressed. And in doing this extra digging and doing this extra research, I came across what is arguably the most compelling evidence that Watchtower is keeping this database, and that's in the organization's own publications. As you would expect of an organization that thinks it's God's one true organization and that it can't put a foot wrong because Jehovah is backing it, the delusion is sufficiently strong for them to basically brag about keeping these records in their own publications. I say their own publications. These aren't publications that ordinary witnesses have access to. These are publications that you have to be at minimum an elder to read, such as the Shepherd the Flock of God book, which I recently did a number of live streams on and this by the way you can read if you're an elder this next publication you won't be able to read if you're an elder you'll only be able to read it if you work at a branch office presumably in a fairly senior position at a branch office this is the branch organization manual I don't know whether you can see with the glare from the lights but this is my uh, printed copy and to be completely honest it's it's a document that I've hitherto mostly ignored because a lot of it isn't relevant a large majority of it, of it isn't relevant to the everyday rank and file unlike in the shepherd book where almost every page is relevant to ordinary witnesses the branch organization is a bit more tedious in spelling out what all the processes are for you know how branches report to the headquarters and that kind of thing but it occurred to me in doing my research okay the shepherd book 
has one side of the story in telling elders to put these records together and pass them over to the service department and I'm going to show you all this wouldn't it make sense if the branch organization manual bearing in mind these records are going to the branch wouldn't it make sense if this manual also said oh and when you receive these records this is what you do and surprise surprise that's exactly what this book says if you know where to look so we're now going to go through what both of these books say about this process just to demonstrate beyond a shadow of a doubt that Watchtower collects information on pedophiles without necessarily passing it over to the authorities. I say necessarily because I'm being overly precise. We have evidence that in the vast majority of cases, in zero cases in Australia, they, net, they keep the authorities completely out of the loop. But I'm, I have to be precise because it's not inconceivable that at least in some cases, somewhere in the world, the authorities will be informed of a given case. It's just that examples of that are impossible to come by at the moment. So let's start off with the Shepherd book and let's go to chapter 14 point 25 chapter 14 is the section that deals with uh, the whole approach to child sex abuse and on point 25 it says filing information concerning individuals associated with the congregation and accused of child sexual abuse established or not including letters of introduction should be placed in an envelope labeled with the individual's name and marked do not destroy this envelope should be kept in the congregation's confidential file this would include notification of disfellowshipping or disassociation s77 forms on individuals who have committed child sexual abuse even if later reinstated. So this paragraph is saying that when an individual is um, processed, you could say, by the elders in relation to child sexual abuse, the information all gets put in, a, in an envelope and marked do not destroy, along with the notification of disfellowshipping or disassociation form, if it's a disfellowshipping, which incidentally looks like this. So this form gets filled out and it gets put in the congregation file. Now, so far, we don't have anything saying, well, this information gets sent, of course, to the branch office. We're going to come to that. But this is the beginning of the process. So the information is put together, is compiled, and you could say collated into one envelope by the elders and if you think about it the confidential file in each kingdom hall becomes its own secret child sex abuse database albeit it's a hard copy database it's not digital so these there are secret records if, if you're watching this as a Jehovah's Witness when you go to your kingdom hall for the midweek meeting or for the um, weekend meeting somewhere most likely in the kingdom hall is a filing cabinet with a maybe a combination lock on it and inside um, this is kept the confidential file which will have if there are if there are pedophiles in your kingdom hall or have been will have these records in them so if you think about it each kingdom hall has its own database so that's the first part of the um investigative journey I want to take you on and I want to take you to chapter 16 which deals with the procedure for judicial hearings and if we go to the very last point in that chapter point 31 it says the judicial committee should promptly inform the service department of the disfellowshipping 
using the notification of disfellowshipping or disassociation form. Isn't that interesting? So they haven't included this in chapter 14 when they're talking about child abuse in particular, but for all judicial cases where someone gets disfellowshipped, all judicial cases, the service department at the branch gets a copy of the S77 form. So data on someone who's been disfellowshipped for child sex abuse is automatically to be sent to the branch. Again, it's all here in black and white in the instructions that elders are required to follow. The next part of the puzzle, if we jump to chapter 22 in the elders guidebook, which actually deals with the whole labyrinth of rules surrounding correspondence and records. This organization, by the way, is obsessed with data and throwing information around on individuals. So they've devoted an entire chapter to how this, how this information is to be managed. And in point three, it says when electronic communication is possible, correspondence and forms should be sent to the branch office using JW.org rather than postal mail. Correspondence to the branch office on behalf of the body of elders is usually sent by the secretary. Confidential reports such as the notification of disfellowshipping or disassociation S77 form would usually be sent to the branch office by one of the elders handling the matter. So again, you have in black and white an elder handling a matter, a judicial matter, including a judicial matter involving child sex abuse, sends the S77 form to the branch office. And if you think about it, there's more latitude here because one thing I've struggled with is finding concrete a concrete statement saying we, we also require you to send your statement on the reproof because elders also have to put together a statement if someone is reproved. And it's not clear whether that is sent to the branch office. But it does say here that there can be confidential reports sent to the branch office, which could include, I would suggest, statements regarding pedophiles who are deemed repentant and therefore only reproved. It's inconceivable in my mind that Watchtower would only want to know or only want to have records when these individuals are disfellowshipped and not when they're merely reproved. It's highly doubtful that the legal department, when they're giving advice to elders, won't be keeping their own records from their side of things, especially if they're sending out letters saying, here's what you're supposed to do. But in any case, one thing that you can emphatically say without any doubt, because it's in their own publications, is that when a pedophile is disfellowshipped for child sex abuse, this information gets put on an S77 form, a copy is kept in the congregation's confidential file, and a copy goes either digitally or in the postal mail to the service department at the branch office. All of that has just been spelled out for us in the pages that I've read to you. Now, what happens when the information arrives at the branch office? Branch organization manual. If we turn to, it's a bit complicated how they do their page numbering system. I don't understand why they've chosen this way of doing it, but the page reference is page 6-15. 6-15. And let's read from the subheading, Processing Judicial Reports. 
disfellowshippings and disassociations, the elder serving as the chairman of a judicial committee or a committee in the case of disassociation is to submit one copy of the notification of disfellowshipping or disassociation S77 to the service department. Usually there is no need for the elders serving on the committee to submit additional correspondence about the case. Role of service desk secretary. So there's a service desk secretary. You're working in the service department and you're the service desk secretary and in comes an S77 form. Let's say it's an S77 form for someone, for an individual who has been disfellowshipped for child sex abuse. The service desk secretary will be responsible to review the S77 form to make sure it is complete. If there is anything on the form that is not clear or is missing, the secretary will contact a member of the committee that submitted the form. It may be possible to obtain missing information by means of a telephone call. Once the service desk secretary has verified that the form is complete, he will enter the record into the electronic file used by the branch office. If the S77 form is scanned into an electronic file, there is no need to keep a hard copy. Depending on local circumstances, it is left to each branch to decide whether there is a need to send a brief acknowledgement to the chairman of the committee that the S77 form has been received. I read this and I thought, wow, how did I not see this before? You have here Watchtower documenting the entire process. Well, I say the entire process. There's still a little bit of ambiguity when it comes to how they deal with confidential records when an individual is reproved. But at least when we're talking about disfellowshippings, for child sex abuse, they're so deluded and they're so convinced that what they're doing is perfectly normal and perfectly justifiable. They've written it all down in their instruction manual. They've said, okay, elders, you've disfellowshipped this pedophile, write it all down in an S77 form, keep a copy in your confidential file in your kingdom hall and send a copy on to the service department where the service desk secretary will scan it into our digital records, bin the hard copy, and he might even tell you, send you confirmation that the whole thing has been taken care of. Just incredible. So if you happen to be a Jehovah's Witness watching this, the question you need to ask is, am I comfortable supporting, enabling, promoting an organization that deals with child sex abuse in this way, that will keep these records on the worst of humanity and takes a very casual approach to whether the authorities are involved. They tell you in the May 2019 Watchtower that they abhor child abuse. They tell you that they take it all seriously. Then they start making ambiguous noises about, even though, yes, it's a crime, but yeah, we'll decide whether we'll endeavor to report it or not. But yeah, it's totally a crime. It's just a crime where we don't always need to necessarily contact the authorities. I'll tell you who always gets contacted and I'll tell you who always receives records when elders are dealing with these cases. It's the service department and it's all there in black and white for anyone who wants to look into it. I would submit that this alone is evidence for any law enforcement agency in any country to go into a branch office 
and obtain these records by force because we're talking about information on pedophiles that isn't being passed on to the authorities or at the very least you can say there's no instructions for elders to automatically involve the authorities therefore if branch offices and indeed kingdom halls let's not forget this is a misconception about the database we, we think of the database just being in the branch office every kingdom hall has its own database in the confidential files so what's stopping any self-respecting law enforcement agency with oversight of the way sex abuse is dealt with in their jurisdiction in their country what's stopping them from going and getting this information because for every second that it's not acted on children are in danger by allowing watchtower to have this process which it's so proud of it's enshrined it in its guidance to elders and branches by allowing watchtower to do this in the 21st century in broad daylight to the point where they're bragging about it and not do anything about it I think is inexcusable and that's why I'm very very proud to be assisting ICSA so that they will understand hopefully uh, when the hearings start they'll understand how bad this is and obviously it will be up to them to decide what to recommend but uh, yeah I'm gonna do my very best to bring this information to their attention but that's pretty much everything I had for you I do want to just take this opportunity to wish you a very Merry Christmas as you can see I have my tree here in the bunker and a happy new year I do hope to put out a few more videos before the year ends but that's pretty much everything on this subject don't forget to subscribe to the John Cedars channel for more such videos and as always thank you for watching Thank <laughs> you.